Hey, I want to uh, make a quick video on the glycemic index and uh, a, relate, a related term is glycemic load. I want you to understand what they mean. Um, you know, glycemic index and glycemic load, it's good to understand both uh, and how different foods drive those uh, numbers inside your body when you eat them. Um, it's kind of an elementary subject. You probably know something about it, but again, I want to make sure you kind of have it uh, wired and understood really well because as we get into other stuff talking about, you know, fat loss and, and energy and, and what you should and shouldn't eat uh, and why, this is kind of a foundational stuff to understand. So let me start on my high-tech uh, whiteboard here and just draw a little graph uh, to give you an idea of what we're talking about. So if I, if I have a, you know, time to the right and uh, glycemic index going up this axis, uh, and we'll put like a... We'll put a hundred here. This is the uh, units, hundred units. This is uh, the glycemic index. You get a number for the different foods uh, based on how your blood glucose will respond. Uh, One hundred is for pure uh, glucose. I mean, so that's um, at the top is one hundred, and then other foods would be in there. And actually, there's some uh, actually will be even greater than hundred. Some sometimes you'll see. Uh, uh, wheat products and different uh, grain products being 105 and things like that. But so uh, so it's it's basically it rates everything uh, as how quickly it would it would uh, raise your blood sugar with respect to glucose, you know, pure glucose. So if you eat a food, let's say you're you're down here at the at rest, um, and really the, a rest a rest. If I could just draw like this narrow band. These are different units down here, but between 70 and 80, it's milligrams per deciliter. Milligrams per deciliter. Your normal, you know, a healthy individual normally wants to stay within about 70 to 80 milligrams per deciliter of glucose concentration in your blood. If everything's working correctly, your body wants to keep that very narrow band. It likes, it likes a little bit, it doesn't like too much, it doesn't like too little. Um, obviously glucose is an energy source, you need it for all types of cellular activity uh, and your body sort of wants to uh, control it very very narrowly and accurately. And if everything's working well, this is what it does. But if you eat a food, a carbohydrate that's going to uh, temporarily raise your glucose, you'll get, you'll get like a, a spike, it'll go up and it'll come down. And if, you know, and if everything's working well in your system, it'll go up and it'll come back down and back into that narrow range between 70 and 80 uh, micrograms per deciliter. So this, the amount of the spike, the, the uh, uh, you know, the height of the spike, how, how quickly and, and how high it goes is the glycemic index, that's your GI. So the GI is, is this number, it's the height, you know, from, the, from where you started up, that's the, the GI for the food and then the sort of the width of the curve is the GL, the glycemic load is, is the other one that I mentioned. So glycemic index is how quickly the blood sugar goes up and how high it goes. And then uh, glycemic load is basically how long it stays elevated. Um, so glycemic load is really trying to quantify um, glycemic index into like a serving size of food. So for example, you could have, um, um, a good example would be watermelon. Watermelon has a very, fairly high glycemic index. I think it's around 70 or 80. So, you know, here, so watermelon will be around here, glycemic index. But because when you eat a serving of watermelon, most of it is water, it's about 90% water. Uh, if whatever a serving size is, you know, 100 grams or something, uh, most of what you've just eaten, eaten is uh, water. It's not the carbohydrate that, uh, that drives the the, you know, the um, glucose response, so it would have a very low glycemic load, something like four or five. So, uh, let's see if I take another color. So watermelon would look like, would go up very fast, to say 70 or 80, but then it would come down real fast, uh, because the glycemic load is low. Uh, conversely, glucose, uh, not glucose, but um, <laughs> the drink, uh, Gatorade, Powerade, any of those, uh, um, you know, they're, they call them athletic drinks, but they're basically just sugar water. Gatorade would have, it has a, it has a high glycemic index. It's, uh, 
um, something around 100, but the the glycemic load is about 50 because it's got you know 8, 10, 12 tea, teaspoons of sugar, and there's a lot of concentration of sugar in there. So um, Gatorade would look like it would go up fast and it would stay long. So you'd have this big area under the curve of um, uh, for glycemic load. So when you have a number like that, you can look at you can you know look at two different foods with with uh, different glycemic loads. If one one is a five and one is a ten, you could basically expect that that the that the the food that drives the ten you know would have twice the metabolic effect as the one that drives the five. So it's it's uh, it's informative to know how high they're going to go uh, as far as the you know the intensity of a spike and how quickly you're going to get this glucose response and really how long are you going to be in that uh, state of eleva elevated blood glucose before it comes down. Uh, back into normal. So that's kind of the um, the difference between glycemic index and glycemic load. The um, ab the a number of 55. Just remember that 55 is considered on the uh, on the scale here. It's like above 55 would be considered a high glycemic index. Below is considered lower. Obviously, it's a continuous um, a scale. Uh, so you'll you know you'll see foods all along there and. Uh, um, again, th this response of going up and coming back down, that nice curve, that is in a healthy individual. If you have metabolic issues, if you're kind of messed up your system over, over the years from eating a lot of crappy food, you may not respond that well. You may go up, get up, go up and stay, stay up longer than you know, a healthy person. Uh, you may never be coming back down into uh, in this 70 to 80. I mean, that's, that's a problem. We'll get into that in, in a future video about being insulin resistant and, uh, and ha having a high uh, fasting glucose level and, and the problems that are associated with that. But um, this is just, just for the, the baseline subject, understand carbohydrates drive this glucose response. It's only, it's only carbohydrates that, that, uh, um, that do it. You know, fats are, have, have no uh, glycemic index. So you just stay flat when you eat a fat. Uh, protein is basically the same. You pretty much stay flat. But... Uh, if you eat excess protein, if it's more than your body needs, there is uh, some residual effect um, as the excess is converted into, uh, into uh, energy that will give you a small response. But in general, it's a carbohydrate issue. Um, and uh, again, in a healthy person, it's not so big of a deal because they're going to go up, they're going to come back down, they're going to get back into, their, into the range their body wants. It's really when you, when you have a problem of of uh, that you're not in this uh, healthy range to begin with and you're you keep driving yourself up and up and up and you're always uh, based on the food you're eating you're all always kind of up in this high uh, gluco glucose area uh, there's a lot of negative stuff that happens uh, or can happen as a result and uh, you know that's something we'll get in, into the next video so uh, let me just pull it up <laughs> pull the white bite up if the graphs make sense Basically, glycemic index is how fast uh, you're going to rise up when you eat a carbohydrate. So it's, it's uh, sort of the height of the spike is the glycemic index number. And then the load is really how long it stays elevated before you get back, back down uh, into that normal range. Uh, you can use both of those numbers to try to, you know, sort of compare foods and understand, um, you know, what's going to happen when you eat them. And 55 is kind of the sort of the number. Above 55 would, would be considered a high GI food. Below is considered low. There you have it.